Hi guys, welcome back to A Bookish Weekend. My name is Brooke and today we are doing my August book haul. So, as I said in my previous video, I don't know if it's up yet. I don't know what order I'm uploading these videos in. But the previous video that I just filmed, um, I said that I am pre-filming videos, which is why I'm in the same outfit, so do not judge me for that. Um, but, but anyway, today we're doing my August book haul and I am actually on a book bang ban now. After Yalk, I said to myself, I'm going on a book bang ban from now until Christmas. Um, before, I've never actually done a book bang ban before, so this is my first one and I know it's quite long for my first one. Um, I don't think it's going to work, I have very like, low expectations for myself. But I'm allowed myself pre-orders and obviously I'm allowed to go to libra libraries. I've never done a book buying ban before because I was like, it's my money, it makes me happy, it doesn't matter what I spend my money on, um, as long as I've, you know, got my responsibilities paid for and stuff like that. But I realised I was spending too much money on books when I have like over 100 books on my TBR and it was just stressing me out, both the amount of books I had to read and the amount of money I was spending on books. So it started going downhill with my book buying, um, and it wasn't making me as happy as it once did. So that's why I'm on a book buying ban. Hopefully it will last um, at least a few months just to get everything under control again. But yeah, um, I have got a few books here. Um, I haven't, one of them is from Fairyly and one of them is a pre-order. The rest I got sent. So I actually haven't bought any books this month. I know, I'm impressed as well. Um, so yeah, let me just show you what books I got this month. So the first one I got is Sea Witch by Sarah Henning and this was the pre-order that came through. I pre-ordered this like at the beginning of the year. I don't know much about it, I think it's an Ursula Little Mermaid retelling. Um, I love mermaids as we all know and pirates and stuff like that. So I decided to give it a go. I know there's a lot of um, like mermaidy books going on at the moment with, and pirate book with uh, to Kill a Kingdom, that um, Irish feminist mermaid retelling. When the Surface Breaks, I think that's what it's called. I don't have that one, um, but I know it was out this year. So I think it's definitely um, a lot of mermaid books out at the moment and I am loving the ones I've read so far. So I'm excited to give this one a go. I've heard good things about it. So yeah, hopefully I'll enjoy it. I don't actually know much about the details of the story, except that it's like an Ursula Little Mermaid retelling. I love Ursula, I love The Little Mermaid, I love mermaids. Um, so I'm very excited to give this a go and the cover is gorgeous, may I say. Stunning. Next is the book I got from Fairyloo. Um, you'll be able to, if you see my Fairyloo unboxing, you'll know what it is. I'll link the video down below if you want to check it out or up here or up here. I don't know what side it is. Um, but yes, yeah, so that book is These Rebel Waves by Sarah Rash. Um, this is the Fairyloo exclusive, so it has green sprayed edges, which are absolutely gorgeous and go over the cover and go over the cover so well. I also received an ARC copy of this book from Happy360 earlier this month. I have already read this book. This book follows our three main characters. First we have Luna who is a rebel and a soldier in the war between Grace Lorray and Argridian. She is a Grace Lorrayan and she fought for independence for her island against Argridian who are rulers and oppressive and fueled on religion but not in a good way. And then we have Devereux or Vex who is a pirate and when he gets captured Luna goes to him for help when an Agridian um, ambassador goes missing and she goes to him to help find the ambassador. And then we have Bennett who is the Agridian prince and he is a heretic but he can't let anyone know that he's a heretic because it'll be a death sentence in his country. Um, and he ends up getting wrapped up in this story as well. I gave this book five stars, so I do recommend that you read it. You'll hear more of my thoughts um, in my wrap up, and I'll probably be writing a uh, review on this at some point. So you'll hear more of my thoughts then. I love this book. I'm so glad I have a finished copy and an ARC copy of it for my collection. Um, yeah, this is just gorgeous. So the next four last books are all ARC copies that I got sent this month. Um, so the next one is also sent by Harper360 at the beginning of this month, and that is Heretics Anonymous. Um, I think I gave this book four stars, maybe. I did write a review on it, so if you want to hear more of my thoughts, you can go and see that. That will be linked down below on my blog, um, or you can wait for my wrap-up to be posted, where I will also discuss some of my thoughts on this book. This book follows Michael, who is an atheist, and he is being sent to St. Clair's, I think it's called. Yeah, 
St. Clair's and that is a Catholic school and so when he goes he is already he knows it's going to be hell. He's looking for another atheist friend, someone that he can find in and feels the same way as him and feels trapped in this school and he thinks he's found this when he hears Lucy, a girl, stand up against a nun about the saints being feminist, going against what the nun is saying and he actually turns out that Lucy isn't an atheist, she is a Catholic and she wants to be a priest. However, she introduces him to this underground group called Heretics Anonymous, Heretics Anonymous and it is full of people who, who also don't fit into the Catholic school mould, if that makes sense. We have, let me read it, we have Avi, who is Jewish and gay. We have Eden, who is um, some sort of pagan. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, she, was very, she had a very long title for her religion. Um, but I love this book, it got me thinking about religion and my thoughts on religion, which I talked about in my review, which will be down below as I said. So I do rec really recommend this book, I am so thankful to Apathy 60 for sending me this book and these rubble waves, so thanks so much to them. The next book I got this month I actually traded with my sister for, so thank you so much to Erin for sent, um, trading this with me. So she got sent an ARC copy of Tear of Hansen, the novel from Penguin. So thanks to Penguin, she was so grateful for you to send it to her. But since she's not a massive Tear of Hansen fan, like I actually traded it for me so kindly. Um, so thank you so much to her. I've been trying to get my hands on an ARC copy of this book so much. So I was very excited when she gave this to me. This is the novel, novelization of Dear Evan Hansen, the musical, which is on Broadway at the moment. It's coming to the West End soon. Um, nothing's been announced yet, but we know it's happening. Um, as you can tell, I wrote a lot of notes on this book. I have, like, pages of notes written up. I will be filming a review for this. I am doing a whole Dear Evan Hansen book, um, celebration week of Dear Evan Hansen videos to celebrate the release of this book in October, so you'll be seeing my review for it then. I just, this book, I'm so thankful for being able to get my hands on it this month. I'm just so happy. If you don't know, Dear Evan Hansen follows um, Evan Hansen, who has anxiety and he writes letters to himself. Dear Evan Hansen, today is going to be a great day and here's why. Um, but one day when he is writing up this letter in his school lab, he prints it off and Connor Murphy ends up having it. But it is found in Connor Murphy's pockets when Connor kills himself. And so Connor's family believe Evan is a friend of Connor's and Evan goes along with this lie and it just builds and builds until it gets too much for him and it is just a great story of mental health and um, just growth and everything but you'll be hearing more of my thoughts in the review and in my wrap up this is just me telling you I got this book it's very exciting it comes out on like October 8th I think it is um, I love this book so much and it's beautiful the white and the blue and just thank you to my sister Sending this, for trading this with me. Next, I have two books sent from Abram and Chronicles, I think that's what they're called. Yeah, this is, these are both Amulet books, which is an imprint of Abram's. So thank you so much to them for sending me these two books. The first one I got is Beneath the Citadel by Destiny Soria. This was a art copy that I tried to get my hands on at Yalk, but I didn't get it, unfortunately. Um, I don't really know what it's about, to be honest. I think it's another sort of fantasy based around religion. Um, it says on the front here, it says, In a country, in a city governed by provinces, can four powerful friends rewrite fate. So it sounds like it's going to have a good group of friends, which I love. I love like this like the squad um, thing in friendships. It's fantasy, which I love. The cover is gorgeous. I'm so excited to read this. I'll be reading it soon. It comes out in October. So... You know I'm going to be reading this soon, and I'll be writing a review on it, and I'll probably love it. It sounds right up my alley. I am so excited to have this. Thank you to Amulet and Abrams for sending this to me. And then the last physical book that I got this month is Easy Prey by Catherine Lowe. I have heard this book on Booktube a few times, which got me interested in it, and this is sent again by Amulet Books and Abrams. So this is about a I think racy pics of a teacher get leaked and three people had access to them. Drew, Mouse and Jenna and it was about what happens after they are released and how and who and all the drama that unfolds. Um, that's all I really know about this book. I'm excited to go into it. It's very, it's intrigued me a lot. Um, so yeah, I'm very interested to see how this goes. Um, it, this also comes out in October so you'll be hearing more of my thoughts close to the time of this book's release date. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited to read it. So thank you to them for sending this to me. And then finally I got sent an e of Saving Death by R.L. Endine, 
Off Tomes Publishing kindly chose me um, out of a few um, and some other book bloggers to send an e-copy of this book to for review. Um, I love Off Tomes Publishing, they are so lovely, I love Ben, um, I met him at Yalk and he was so kind and just gave me a hug. And I'm also pretty sure I met the author but without realising it because she gave me a signed postcard of the cover of Saving Death. Um, but this is a urban fantasy maybe, I'm not entirely sure, it's like quite gothic, I don't really know what it's about but it definitely sounds up my alley and very interesting so I'm excited to read this as well. This comes out in November so again you'll be hearing more of my thoughts closer to the time about this book. I can't wait to read it. Okay so as you can probably tell from the background it is a little bit later on in the day um, I was just editing this video when the doorbell rang and I got a package from Amazon. I know what this is because I got an email about it this morning um, but I thought if I leave it I'm gonna forget to put it in next month's haul so I thought I could just do a little mini unboxing here before the end of the video so you can see what books I got so let's just open it up oh that didn't go as smoothly as I would have liked there we go so let's just have a look I didn't realize they were both hardcover I was expecting paperback that's exciting right so the first book we have here is Sea Fire by Natalie C. Parker. To be honest, this was a very, I think, spur of the moment purchase when I pre-ordered this book. I think I was looking for like more pirate books, and this one seemed to be like that. The cover's really pretty actually. I thought it was ugly on um on the computer, but it's actually really pretty. Um I don't know what this is about, to be honest with you. It says Sisterhood of Survival. It's not too big. Shall I read you the blurb? Let's read you the blurb. The first in a heart-stopping trilogy that recalls the undeniable feminine power of Wonder Woman and the powder cake action of Mad Max. Follows the captain of an all-female all ship intent on taking down a vicious warlord's powerful fleet. After her family is killed by corrupt warlord Arag Elfair and his bloodthirsty army of bullets, Saladonia Styx is left to chart her own course on the dangerous and deadly seas. She captains her ship, the Moors Navis with a crew of girls and women just like her who have lost their families and homes because of Eric and his men. The crew has one mission, stay alive and take down Eric's armed and armoured fleet. But when Celadona's best friend and second in command barely survives an attack thanks to help from a bullet looking to deflect, to defect, Celadona finds herself questioning whether to let him join the crew. Is this boy the cue to taking down Eric out there once and for all or will he threaten everything the woman of the Mars Navisa wrote for? So it sounds like a uh, pirate, female, female pirate crew um, trying to take down this warlord, which sounds really interesting. I love, so you know, good feminist female power and I love pirates, so this is very exciting. Um, that actually sounds really good. I wasn't expecting that to sound so interesting to me. I thought it would be one of these books I didn't really care about and didn't know why you were pre-ordered, but yeah, I'm excited to read this now, actually. That was no surprise. And uh, then this next book is Toil and Trouble, 15 Tales of Women and Witchcraft, edited by Jessica Spotswood and Tess Sharp. If you know me, you'll know there are two things that you can just like pitch to me and I'll buy it straight away. Like pirates, memories, the ocean, that sort of stuff. And then witches and witchcraft. So I have my pirates and I have my witchcraft. This unboxing just sums me up to be honest with you. Uh, this cover is gorgeous as well, look at it. I wasn't expecting this to be as gorgeous either. Um, but it is absolutely beautiful. So this is an anthology, I believe. It is featuring stories from Brandy Culber, Zoraida Cordova, Andrea Cremer, Kate Hart, Emery Lord, Elizabeth May, Anne-Marie Mecklemore, Talo K. Mejia, Tess Sharp, Lindsay Smith, Jessica Spotswood, Nivera and Suma, Robin Talley, Chef de Sacra, Bena Yuvanov. I don't know if I pronounced all of them correctly. If I didn't, I am sorry. Um, but yeah, oh, it's orange. That's beautiful. Ah, oh, that's gorgeous. Right, I'm pretty sure this is just uh, 15 short stories about witchcraft. Um, Scorn the witch, fear the witch, burn the witch. History is filled with stories of women accused of witchcraft or fearsome girls with arcane knowledge. Toil and Trouble features 15 stories of girls embracing their power, reclaiming their destinies, and using their magic to create, to curse, to cure, and to kill. And so I think this is just about teenage girls who like embrace the magic or whatever, something like that. Look at like the title pages, they're gorgeous. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest with you, but I'm interested to read it. I'm gonna read this one soon, so I'll let you all know what I think of it and 
give you a bit more information there. So yeah, back to the main video. But yeah, that's all the books I've got for this month, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm quite proud of myself for not actually buying any books this month, but I still got quite a nice haul here. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.